Oh, there's one. Two. Three. Why does it spit it out? Studying insects in books and labs is great, but if you really want to learn about them, you have to study them in their natural habitat. That's why our group of 14 students and two professors from the University of Guelph headed for Ecuador's tropical cloud forest on a field entomology course. Doctors Steve Marshall, Cynthia Scott Dupree, and Gard Otis have been traveling the world with entomology students for the past 20 years. These professors share their lifelong passion for insects and their thirst for discovery and inspire many students to pursue further training in insect classification and behavior. The road that we're going to travel from Quito up across the mountains to Yaniyaku is my favorite road in the world. It goes up through this very about 4,000 meter open paramo, which I collected for the first time. I studied in 1979 in my first trip to, to South America, which may color my, my feelings for Ecuador because it was the first South American place I went on a Carleton University field course. The group this year consists of uh, 14 students. About half of them are graduate students, so that means they're doing their master's or PhD. Dr. Scott Dupree likes taking students out of the classroom and into the field. She finds it inspires them to ask good questions, and that in turn leads to good science. It seems like an eternity ago that uh, I was sitting at coffee with Gard Otis, and I said to him, we need a field entomology course. And he said, yeah, let's do it. And I went, well, okay. And the next year we had a field entomology course. We both have had many, many positive experiences at field stations around the world. And we started talking about the idea of, hey, we could run a field course. And how would we do it? And where would we go? Dr. Marshall explains that many of the smaller insects at the Yanayaku Biological Station are new to science. This may sound surprising, but knowledge is very limited in some categories of small insects, especially wasps and flies. Field trips allow scientists to discover what these insects do, what they eat, what their mating behavior is, and where their offspring develop. Ecuador is, is a special country in many ways. It's certainly one of the best countries in the world for seeing a variety of, of flora and fauna in a, in a, a small area. Most days begin with a short meeting. Jose, the station manager and trail guide, informs us we arrived right in the middle of the rainy season. Forecast is for rain every single day. But no one anticipated just how muddy the trails would be. Probably the best way they discover they like insects is through this field entomology course. Now that being said, a lot of them have already taken like a basic entomology course. So they're already maybe interested in insects. But the thing that hooks them is being in a cool place where you can be with neat people who have shared interests, catching really cool and interesting insects. It may be stuff other people know very well, but you don't know it. So you're, just, you're going through this constant process of discovery. Um, and it's just, uh, it captivates, it captivates. Photos taken with cell phone cameras these days 
are generally good enough to identify large insects. And that's a good thing! This means we can spend more time investigating lesser known species. We do need to collect the smaller ones that need to be identified under a microscope. Looking for insects, like woodpecker. <laughs> I'm going to cut a finger off. Who has the first EK with them? Here, one of the students was very hungry along the trail. <laughs> Got a grub to eat. Desperate for food. She's trying to reach the grub. Oh, oh and he just spit something. Oh. <laughs> no, he's oh, he's coming hungry. in. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> Good. Sorry, I'm going to picture. Mm -hmm. I make like a cape and then feel <laughs> feel safe and then when a little bit I'm up it okay yeah <laughs> feel a little bit safe and then you came up slow slow okay when do I do it <laughs> maybe now ready? yeah please <gasps> yeah I see oh wow Aww. So she's okay. thinking it's hiding inside a cape <laughs> No, it's not. Hikes through the jungle are filled with surprising encounters. Riley found a giant earthworm crawling under some wet leaves. While they're much bigger than those we encounter in Canada, they're absolutely harmless and easy to handle. It's like a snake, but it's a worm. <laughs> we can't really see it with the camera, but when you take the worm in your hands, you can feel the tiny rigid hairs on the surface of their skin. It's really cool. <laughs> okay, ready? Yes. Ready? If I get a disease. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who wants it? Jose was right about the forecast. We had a torrential downpour midway through our hike. Keeping the camera dry was really challenging. We are close to join the another trail. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, the rock trail. So and then so come down. This is part of the adventure. I mentioned yesterday that the weather is crazy. I can tell to you <laughs> changing so fast. Yeah. The weather. Yeah, right. He wasn't kidding about the rain. Jose showed us how to craft water repellent gear using giant leaves and a machete. Maybe we could start a trend. Every night we gather for bug of the day. This is an opportunity for students to show and tell the cool stuff they found during the day. The content is the same as a regular in-class introductory lecture, though it doesn't start with the most primitive insects and move towards the most complex from an evolutionary standpoint. Instead, all orders of insects are reviewed progressively as they are encountered by the group. Do do you think in terms of, of that whole hierarchy that, that you learned in your introductory entomology class and where you see gaps, go out and look for those gaps and try and bring them in in other evenings. So I got a leaf cutter ant. I thought it was cool because I always see them in documentaries, so it's cool to see it in real life. That's, that's one of the interesting things about getting up over 2,000 meters is that ants that rule the rest of the tropics really taper off. And I've, I've really struck the absence of ants here. So this is my bug of the day. Is an assassin bug and it was eating, um, I think it was a beetle, it was really hard to tell. So I saw this yesterday, I bet a lot of people did too, um, and they were mating and I thought that was interesting. But also that they're stink bugs, but they have very different coloring than those we see in North America. I picked this bean apart. <laughs> and inside it was this larva who has continued to eat in the vial. As I was picking the bean apart, it just withdrew quick, like further and further into the hole. And then when I got to like a critical point, it like ejected this black goo from its mouth and then just like ran. <laughs> <laughs> this was shot yesterday at the black light sheets. Uh, so it's an earwig. I think this is the most flashiest earwig I've ever seen. Steve mentioned last night that there's these types of caterpillars around here and uh, uh, yeah, I didn't want to get too close to this guy just because <laughs> I didn't know if he's poisonous or toxic or not, so. 
you see what I mean? We will cover the entire insect and we'll have a really good familiarity with the fawning here. At night we use a mercury vapor light near a sheet of white cloth to attract nocturnal insects. It's a great way to meet the critters that hide during the day. Light? Yeah! <laughs> After today's rain, a campfire feels so nice. Everyone gathers around to dry their wet clothes. We're starting to realize this is what the next two weeks will be like. Welcome to the rainy season at the Yanayaku Station. Trail expeditions and insect observations keep us busy. We brainstorm on experiments to run in the forest and how to evaluate insect behavior. So far we've been working at 2100 meters above sea level. As you could tell from the way we're dressed, it's cold and humid at the station. But today we're headed to Narupa Yaku, which is only a thousand meters above sea level. We're looking forward to its warm weather. One of the things we wanted to achieve was giving students an opportunity to experience the kinds of things that drove us to get involved in entomology. We're going to the place we call Narupa Yaku, that way. If you see the down, see the rod, it is like a curve there, the green, green, green station, this is the oil station, and we have to go there right a little bit, like maybe five kilometers inside. So Loretta Road we call, so we're going that place. <laughs> nice. We arrive at Narupa Yaku, and it is much warmer. The place is swarming with life, especially ants and bees. Ecuador is unbelievably diverse because it goes from lowland Amazon to dry forest on the Pacific, and then of course the mountains, the, the Andes, right up to above snow line. They're not eggs, they're larvae, they're moving. Yeah. There's a pupa there too. Sugarcane grows everywhere around here. Cut open a stalk with your pocket knife and you get to experience a pure and natural sugar rush. It's very sweet. So good. We head back to the station with logbooks and cell phones filled with observations. The landscape fades away into the clouds. At times, the fog is so dense we can hardly see more than a meter in front of the bus. We'll have so much to talk about at tonight's Bug Crazy of the Day. Um, when Steve told me it was a fourth doctor and I just lost my mind. <laughs> I think that this is some kind of like a courtship. A Hymenaltra species that we saw uh, lower down foraging on these purple flowers that seem to be planted everywhere. Came across this where it's a tapulid where a Ceratopagonid is feeding on the back of it. Guess what? We're having another wet day. Rain, rain, and more rain. So when Jose asked if I would join him on a grocery run into town, in a closed truck, I couldn't resist. We're heading to Tena, the capital of the Napo province. On the way back, we stop at an indigenous market to purchase a bucket of squirming palm weevil larvae. I can't wait to show the group. Oh. Ooh, it feels like Easter. <laughs> Can I do it? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, <laughs> go. Oh, oh, they're oh, massive. Oh. Uh, I want to hold it. Yeah, Whoa. that's what I'm doing too. Ew, it's goofy. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god, it's so <laughs> chubby. Oh, <laughs> it just flexed under my fingers. <laughs> Ew. Uh, Ew, what? <laughs> it feels like ass. Oh, Can don't bite me. Ah, ah, ah. Can no. We go? <laughs> Larvae, called chantakuros, are considered to be a local delicacy. Alejandro, our chef, offered to cook them just the way he likes them, with a touch of salt and lemon. Entomophagy, the practice of eating insects, is rare in Canada. It is not for the faint of heart, but it is a very eco-friendly way to get your protein. Oh, they're warm. Guys, I can't do it. Mm. Okay, I don't know if we can do it. I suddenly changed my mind. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. It smells kind of good, actually. It's super buttery. <laughs> I just like it. Is there enough? Uh, negative. Come on, negative. I have a half. Does someone want a half? It's actually not bad. They're delicious. I don't want any more. I want to try it. Does anyone want it? Charles! 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 You don't eat it, you give <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's really good. Go, 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 go. Well, you don't, don't smell it before you eat it. Come on. Oh, yeah. That oh, oh, is dripping. Oh, oh, come on. No, it's dripping. Oh, God. It's oh. Oh. <laughs> no. Between you and I, I just didn't have the stomach for it. I licked it. Oh, yeah. Uh, like it was very salty. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's it. It tasted like the popcorn. Yeah, let's go, folks. After this exciting culinary experience, it's time for another round of Bug of the Day. Student projects are progressing well, and soon it will be time to share our findings. This is the fruits of my labor. <laughs> this is uh, Micropisa, the sky focus. So that's the genus that I've been looking for this whole time. The coloring is really cool. So it's got these. Jacked arms. <laughs> so it's like a stink bug nymph. You can actually see it eating. Uh, I thought something was actually on its back. This is a Lepidopteran caterpillar that we found in our brief period of sun time. We had a Monday. So this is the food item for the female. The antennae extend out to here and they're quite long. And I found this guy. He was very green, kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> But that is not a hummingbird, it's a hummingbird moth. This looks like the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings, and I thought it was really cool. Um, but I was reading up on it, and it actually spits acid. But yeah. I thought it was very strange the way it was walking. <laughs> and then that's a hyperparasitoid. One of the stone flies that I collected. And then these are aphid mummies. So these have been parasitized. The, the raid today was 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 kind of uh, opportune because uh, now you can get, you spend time in the field uh, with with less stress because yeah. you've got the backbone of your lark book done. And many you you have quite a bit of it already done, which is impressive. Our trip is one adventure after another. On day ten, we were off to explore caves filled with whip scorpions. I know that sounds like the last thing a normal human being would want to do. But for entomologists like us, it's like winning the lottery. Whip scorpions aren't dangerous. They may expel a vinegar-like substance when they feel threatened. It smells bad, but it's completely harmless. It's so dark in the caves. I had to switch the camera into infrared mode. That's why you're seeing everything in black and white. Water is constantly dripping from the ceiling and this creates stunning stalactites and stalagmites in a number of tiny pools. I wouldn't recommend coming down here if you're claustrophobic. The trail quickly becomes narrower to the point of having to crawl in mud to get through some passages. Whip scorpions aren't the only creatures in these caves. We also found tarantulas and bats. This trip was getting better and better. Until we hit an underground waterfall, I was not prepared for that. I nearly ruined the camera for a second time on this trip, but it was totally worth it. Getting back to the surface meant a 10 meter climb up a road. The only way to get Wi-Fi up in the cloud forest was through a solar powered system. And believe me, this doesn't always work all that well in the rainy season. So we went without internet for as long as 14 hours at a time. Well, that's life in the cloud forest. Now that we've been at Yanayaku for nearly two weeks and collecting data for almost as long, we're getting ready to share the fruits of our labor. What I'm doing is testing between blue here and yellow sticky cards and determining if there's a difference in the insect abundance and richness on each sticky cards and at three different elevations. I'm using this hand lens here to be able to better see these insects on the sticky card and I am IDing them to order as best I can even though some of them are a little bit squished. Okay, who's doing sweeping? 
So Avalon is low and Vivian is sweeping high and they're both going for different types of sweep levels. We are trying to scan for richness as well as abundance. Um, we're, we'll be IDing uh, the species that we find later today. The field study course teaches us to apply the scientific method in a field setting. The first step is to record your observations. The next is to ask questions, such as, why is this insect moving in a repeated manner? Only after this is it possible to generate a hypothesis and find measurable ways to rigorously quantify our observations. This is how we gather evidence that suggests our hypothesis was either correct or incorrect. When I came back in 2002 from a visit to Sierra Azul with a, with a whole bunch of these flies, uh, I dissected them, had a look at them, and realized that they were a, a totally new genus, uh, quite different from any other genus in the family Spherocerida. Stipulacina is actually a manuscript name, so it hasn't been published. There's a few more, um, but these are all the flies we've collected uh, in the bamboo stipules. Some projects are part of larger studies. Here, students are helping Dr. Steve Marshall and PhD student Tiffany Yao to look for flies associated with bamboo stalks. This uh, has been a very good project for the field course because it's, it's integrated all, all levels of, of, of experience. Tiffany is a doctoral student and she's focusing on, on uh, finishing up this fly project I started 17 years ago. A group of undergraduates became involved with the project and decided to do the beetles following Tiffany's protocol, which she developed for, the, for, for studying the ecology of the flies. And there's a, a wonderful synergy between her, her project on the flies and the student project on, on the beetle community. So we are sampling two different flower species that we found along the trail for five days and we're going to compare the richness and abundance of insect species within those flowers over time. And they are very distinctive. So one is starting to flower and the other is deceasing. We're cutting four flowers per day um, from a random height in the tree's profile. And then we take those samples back and we sort them in soapy water so the insects can't escape. And then we go through the keys to identify the family of the insects. And then we're going to compile that data and compare. Mary's walking towards where we've been spraying the honey every day. And it's been washed off every day by the rain. And then over here is where we've been spraying the sugar. Um, so every day we will, in the morning, late morning, early afternoon, late afternoon, we will spray five sprays each on two leaves on that plant to see what is attracted. There is something special about field entomology. It gives you a deeper appreciation for your field of study. Plus you get to meet people you might never meet otherwise. These courses are milestones in our journey, or at least they were in mine. They've provided some of the most memorable moments of my graduate studies at the University of Guelph. I'll fondly remember the muddy walks in the forest, the incredible insects I've encountered, the juicy chandakuros and empanadas that Alejandro prepared, and of course the people I shared this journey with. Actually, I'm pretty sure this reflects the views of every student who accompanied Drs. Steve Marshall, Cynthia Scott Dupree, and Gardotis throughout the years. So from all of us to our wonderful profs, thanks for going the extra mile. This is learning at its best. Message of advice, um, except that you know very little.
and that you don't know where your path lies, even if you're sure you know, still allow the opportunity to experience new things and, uh, and bring it within your realm of experience. Don't invest yourself entirely in research. Uh, a lot of people love the research, but you need to share your knowledge. You need to inspire the next generation. And, and I really think that that's the best part of these field entomology courses. The students learn a lot, but you have a chance to take them out of the classroom, put them in nature, let them experience in real time what's out there, and, and teach them, inspire them. Um, make sure that they really enjoy what they're doing and want to share it with others. We have a debt to the planet to, to keep it together and, and to, to threaten the species. One of, the, one of the, the threads of the fabric of life, to deliberately allow one of those threads to snap, is completely irresponsible for us as a species. The point is that we have a responsibility to understand and preserve you know, lifeboat Earth, and, and species are the, are the rivets that hold lifeboat Earth together. You can learn all you want. The concentration. What am I doing? I need Mary to tell me what I'm doing. I was hoping to see Taylor Swift scorpion. Taylor Swift scorpion. Taylor Swift scorpion. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to compare the uh, uh, cut. <laughs> I, I, think I can't describe it. Like, well, move like be the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's not supposed to be in the kitchen. Oh.